let's start this thing chat how are y'all good morning good morning good morning Evan is currently waiting on three different retros to arrive, which I think is a record. The rapid fire LEs have been crazy. What do you have coming, Evan? The labeled M805, the uh, demonstrator with the uh, with the descriptions on it. I have that one. That's a good question. That's a good question, Evan. Um, with what I've seen from the releases. I think we've had the high. What do you think? Could it I unless they just throw it throw the unless it's a kitchen sink release, right? Unless we see a kitchen sink release, I think we've seen the big stuff. 30th anniversary, like they know escape and the submarines are gonna crush, all that kind of stuff. Class, tiny badge, thank you. Thank you so much. Gotta get my cheers back. I have yet to jump on the retro train wondering if I should just stay in the dark since they're closing up. I mean, it's not for everybody, right? Like, there's reasons why people like it. There, there's a multitude of reasons, right? We came to like them in the beginning because it is one of the best writing experiences for the price on the market, right? They use the Schmidt refill in a very comfortable barrel and non-pin people go oh look at my fancy spent pen that i spent 22 dollars on and it's amazing right and then that like you kind of go over this cliff then that oh look at all these special editions they release every five minutes and oh i like that one and i like that one i like that one so yeah like uh like i get it like it's okay not to <laughs> like they're not for everybody especially if you don't like this refill right that's the biggest flaw is, is more people dislike the refill than they dislike how the pen feels and writes so that kind of thing bump and raven are coming what's the raven what's what's the raven one? Oh, osu big sub i'm gonna show osu something here I, I'm I'm just a terrible human being. So we'll just do that. That's the uh I'm supposed to send OSU this picture. But I haven't done it yet. I'm a terrible person. They released a Poe special edition? Yeah, I didn't see that. Let's see. Pen boutique. Let's pull it up for y'all. First I've ever seen this. Kind of okay. It doesn't like it when I hover over it. I can't I can't embiggen it. Whoa. It's very, very touchy chat. No, that's a terrible picture. I don't know what's going on. Alright, there we go. Pretty sweet. Yeah, never heard of the Raven. Like this is literally the first I've seen it. So yeah, that's cool. Love it. Question, do Mont Blanc refills fit? They do not. So the Mont Blanc roller balls are basically like Pilot G2 sized, and that doesn't fit in this. They're, little, they're too long. Oh, and you're, that's right. Jackie, one dog night, one of us won the, uh, the what's, what was that one called? Mandarin and yellow kind of thing. Oh, that was the one people were wondering on Tuesday. Hey, I wonder what's coming on Tuesday at 11 kind of thing. Yeah. Monteverde refills will fit the retro. The one weird refill that I use and a lot of people use in the retro is called the Oto Flash Dry. It's a needlepoint 0.5 millimeter gel refill. This is pretty great. I mean, this is this is why we like retro because they can execute an idea really, really well. Right? And the idea may not be for you, may not suit you, but for who it does and what it is. They like kind of kind of nail it, so yeah, this is really nice. I am surprised it's only forty five dollars. To be perfectly honest, I guess there's not a lot of different colors in it. Like the colors will get you more than the print detail. Print detail is really nice, but there's really only like three colors, so cool. Yeah, they, they ramp up, ex they, they get expensive when you start doing stuff like this. <laughs> Evan, I've seen some of the Mont Blanc refills in the specialty inks, like they've had the Beatles and stuff. I keep, 
I keep wanting to use those, and I should. Okay, good morning, Cocolina. Will those fit in the um, in the Mark Newson? What is that one called? The M, what's M series? What's the Mark Newson Rollerball? I don't think they fit in those, or else I would have bought them by now. They only fit in the traditional rollers or a G2 barrel. They'll fit in any Pilot G2 barrel. Jerkface, thanks for the bits. Is Jerkface's name on the wall? We should put his name. Mont Blanc M. Yeah, I don't think those special edition Mont Blanc roller refills fit the M. I think it's a different size. What else did I miss? I got, I got a lot this morning. So we're not going to have a super long stream today at 11 o'clock. Mike is going on the Relay FM channel. We're going to go over there and watch him play with keyboards. All right, if I missed your chat earlier and you had a question, let me know. Mont Blanc M is a ballpoint, not a roller ball, and the special edition ballpoint refills fit it. Hmm. I need to look at it because I just put the, uh, the Schmidt refill in my M, so that's what fits, which makes me think that the full-size Mont Blanc refills don't fit it. Who knows? Could be very, very wrong there. So... All right. Um, I got a little show and tell. Oh, there's my tweet deck. Good morning, tweet deck. Um, a double meeting at the mo moment. So you have a work meeting and then a meeting with me. So that's the double meeting. I, that's that's the way I read that. Well, that's not confusing, Evan. I'll have to look at mine. The giveaway pin will be my first Edison, hopefully not a gateway pin. You got the you got the complex one out of those. So you have the uh, draw filler. So it's like you, you pump it in, pull it out, and it's got like a blind cap on the back of it. It's a weird little pin, and it has a, a specific refill that Brian builds to have this tube on the back of the refill. You'll see it when you get it. It's a weird little pin, but it's my favorite, one of my favorite Edison shapes. Um, that shape just fits my hand really, really well. <clears throat> We've shown this before, chat. Y'all know what this is. We've shown this before. Good morning, love, loveless. Um, but I figured since we're raffling it off again, we should we should break it back out and discuss it because actually I don't have too much to discuss this morning before we throw it over to Mike. <coughs> Excuse me, y'all. Um, do you want to see? You want to see the Rushi? Question mark. Secret rod in time. Yeah, this. I think this one might be hard in the lighting that I have in here to see, but we'll see. Did you see my DM? I don't know. I'm blanking. All right. So we got the Carolina external box oh today if you sent it just now then no i definitely haven't seen it we have the fancy fancy box i wonder if i should check this dm before i go further like i wonder did i get my in trouble oh yeah i definitely did not see i have no oh i have an alert but that's weird i have an alert but not a message that's funny oh wow Yes. Nice. Oh, and I see a, a link from, I guess that's yesterday. I totally hadn't seen any refills. Tessa, be careful with my pen. Mike Hurley, thanks for the sub. Let's go. Let's go. We need my cheerleaders for Mike. I'm so ticked that Ariana and Greg are not working. So, yeah, we're throwing this, we're throwing this over to Mike at 1 o'clock. Oh, there's a spider on my monitor. That was lame. That's not cool. All right, so we got this guy right here. Whoa, there's me. What's up, me? Hey, chat. I see y'all. This is like uh, Inception kind of thing going on right here. So, man, now I want to know where that spider went. <laughs> All right, so. Uh, psych. It's a sleeve meant by, uh, meant by, made by. <laughs> Made by Shea Brooks. Mike Hurley has made a triumphant return to the Twitch chat. Yay, Mike Hurley. 
Um, your keyboards are looking fine, my friend. We've had some keyboard talk in here last week. I've had a keyboard streamer reach out in stream that uh, we'll have to see. Disastra, thanks for the follow. Um, so yeah, we have we have this guy. This little silk kimono pin sleeve going on here with a little it's it's more like a sleeping bag you know it's like one of those mummy sleeping bags you know which i prefer you know mummy style sleeping bag you got to be completely covered up in, in the sleeping bag right that's the way it goes whoa napier villain thanks for the follow appreciate you then we uh wow it actually does show up pretty well on the camera it's in my face but we'll put it on that we'll put it on desk cam and see if we can get some close-up shots but look at that that is wild like you don't notice how much rodden's on there till i like shine it in the light that it just kind of pops everywhere so we'll see if we can get some we'll put it on the desk cam in just a second so there's the grip section i still haven't learned where my cameras are there's the grip section all right, and the cap. Here's the here's the special parts. Look at this. So there, we'll do one at a time. There's the cap finial. That's pretty amazing. This quick twitch do blue check marks. I don't think it does. No, I, it might. It might. And then there's the barrel. Right. So that's pretty cool. Let's, uh, what color pin was it under the Rushi? That's a great question, Evan. Um, I'll have to ask Brooks. I'm trying to remember if he, t yeah, I'm sure he's told me at some point, but I can't remember off the top of my head. All right, let me get this camera. Let's see if we can do, get some, uh, closer ups. Um, maybe behind the box here. This box will, this, this box will cut you. Sorry. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Can you see inside the barrel? Like it's see-through. Is that what you mean? Oh, are you saying like if I unscrew it, can I see? Are they all single color on the inside? So this section's clear. It's like black on the end. I don't know. You're going to make me get out my flashlight now. Carly Night Art, good morning. Where's my flashlight? Like, do they? I can't believe I'm doing this right now. I don't know. It just looks black plastic to me. I'm losing my mind over here. Yeah, the section's definitely clear. Yeah, I guess it's just black. Who knows? I, I do have some real flashlights, just I haven't brought them in here. All right, so there's this. Let's see if we can get this on here. Look at that. It's like a galaxy or an eyeball. My hands are in the way. I have too much in the background. That's pretty sick. Proper term is torch, I know. I gotta get my torches in here. So there's this side of it. Hmm. Eh, you get the idea. So yeah, kind of amazing. I'm a little bit worried to like be playing around with this, to be honest. <laughs> last thing I knew is, uh, it, uh, last thing I need to do is break this and then uh, have to raffle it off. But look, you can see all the little little specks in there as I do it. Ah, it is really good. It's really good. It feels good too. Like it feels like a, uh, 
it feels like a safari. That was like the biggest comment Mike and Anna and myself had that it feels exactly like a safari would feel like if you were going in blind to it. Right. Feels pretty good. What nib is on it? A medium nib. Medium nib. But yeah, I mean, what else can you say? It's pretty spectacular. Pretty spectacular. How much do I need to donate to get 51% of the entries? I have no idea. I'm purposefully not looking. I'm just making sure the emails are coming in and not looking at the amounts until I have to build out the sheet. Like I could just show this to you all day. We should just have this in the background, like spinning around like, uh, but without the uh, part. I mean, I don't know what to say, chat. It's spectacular. Spectacular. It could be a Franken pin. Yeah, I don't know. Pin at a QVC. Yeah, that's what we need. Brad, did it come in a pin sleeve too? It did. And if you would show up on time, you would have gotten to see it. Right here. Start at 10 o'clock. Every Tuesday and Thursday. Right there. <laughs> I am at home, but also working too, Patrick. So I'm not cutting you any slack. Who will be the lucky winner? I don't know. I don't know. It'll be interesting. So yeah, it's uh, it's exciting. I'm I'm glad to not have this pen at home anymore. That would be great um, because it just sits by my desk and I want to use it. But I I know better. Um, the only thing I have to figure out is the letter that Jonathan wrote with it. It's like in this big, you know, Carolina Penco envelope, like mega size envelope. And uh, I got to find that so I can send it to the winner. Like I didn't, did I open this one? I think I opened this one because he wax sealed them. But I think I opened it just to figure out what this question mark thing was supposed to be. Um, but it has the details on that. So maybe you're on a roll and win. I don't know. You're a winner already, Jackie. You're a winner in life. So yeah, that's good. So yeah, the end. No, I'm just kidding. That that's really all I had to talk about. So we can talk about. Mike's got the uh, Mike's got the the link in the chat. Oh yeah, I was supposed to. Coco told me I was supposed to. Um, I was supposed to make a uh, Nightbot um, command to slam the the uh, the link to the donations. Um, you know the one thing that I didn't do that is kind of bugged me about this is my blog doesn't have a feature block set up so i can't keep this one at the top until i go figure i gotta go figure out how to um put the feature block into where is this put the feature block um onto my blog so this post stays up at the top hashtag squarespace you get 10 percent off your purchase with the code pen addict at checkout. That was an ad, uh, unspon that was a free ad Squarespace free ad. Um, but yeah, I, there's a feature block. I don't have the thing where you can pin a post at the top basically. So if I can put a feature block on there, mark it as a feature post, I just need to, I need to do it. And I am just strapped on time. Like every day now that the kids are back, man, my days just up and vanish like so fast. So there you go. We'll put it back into the question mark. Who will win the question mark? Just remember, chat, this is for the kids. This is your a uh, chance to uh, help us out, help Relay out, help St. Jude's out. And uh, we really appreciate it. All right. Um, what else should we talk about? Should we talk about how many things I have to do today that I'm not going to get to? That'd be cool. Not really. But yeah, I am, uh, now that the kids are back, I'm just running like a maniac. So good times. Like I was out of the house four different times yesterday. It's just, how can you get anything going? How's shipping going? I've shipped through 650. I have a hundred ready to label, which I probably won't get to today. Um, maybe... They might not be dropped off till Monday, but then I might can 
I might can finish this weekend. How do I show that uh, I donated here? Let me get the link. So yeah, I could theoretically be done. I actually, I plan on getting done this weekend. Like I need to be done this weekend <laughs> because I have other stuff going on. I have to launch a Kickstarter next week. I have to ship other pins the following weekend. Good morning, Foolish Fox. So, yeah. Yeah, please, please um, um, check with your employer. See if they match um, your donations to St. Jude because a lot of companies will do that. You wish you could help me with shipping Tesla? I do too. But, like, I'm in good shape now. Like, I am... I'm pretty happy. Well, I'm I'm pleased with where I'm at in the in the status. If I can get past this, like my rest of the uh, rest of the summer, rest of the summer, rest of the year should be smoother sailing. Like even if I have to ship out like two or three hundred Karen Dash eight forty nines, those are pretty. Those are just straightforward. Pop them in the envelope. So easy peasy. <clears throat> I'm self-employed and my boss is a bitch. I can vouch for that. I have met your boss, Schmevelin. Totally. Total agreement. <laughs> I'm excited for the Karen Dash pins. I'm excited for them too. So, yeah, like I am like happy like where I'm at right now in the shipping progress. So, like there's just a little bit over 800. Um, will I cover the Kickstarter on Tuesday stream? That's a great idea. See, that's why I need y'all here. Y'all give me all the good ideas. Y'all the ones that helped me figure out how to do the St. Jude thing properly, and I'm very happy with that outcome, even though like that's not what I thought um, it was gonna be. You know, that was not my initial thought, and we got to talk it out. Um, yeah, y'all are super helpful. So. We'll cover it. Yeah, we can cover it on Tuesday. It's gonna be pretty straightforward. The only thing is I gotta figure out a video for that. I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do. Is anyone, uh, do I have any video editors for hire in here? I don't know, I could probably do it. It's just gonna be a simple like iPhone video showing the cases saying, hey, I'm Brad from Knock, buy my stuff. Or excuse me, don't buy my stuff, back this campaign to help support the ongoing inventory, new products of Knock, not buy my stuff. You don't buy stuff on Kickstarter, you support businesses, support makers. So yeah, I need to write a little script, shoot a video this weekend. I haven't written the contents of it, and nor have I set the pricing. <laughs> so I got a lot of work to do to get that thing launched on Tuesday, and it's already Thursday this week. It's like, hey, good morning, Everett. Do we have school today? So yeah, I got a lot of work ahead of me this weekend. I just realized like I just doubled down my work this weekend. Oh, I'm gonna ship everything by Monday. Oh, by the way, I have to write a Kickstarter project. Something doesn't add up. Distance learning, 8 a.m. All right, put in the work today, Everett. No, but like I, y'all are sick of me saying this. Like I'm in a good place. I'm in a good place. Like it's, I'm very busy. Um, and this week was harder than most just with the kids having to physically go to school. I was not prepared to to just be running around um, as much, even though I've done that for years. But I don't allocate my time correctly. Child labor, man, I've tried to pay them. They haven't helped me one iota on this project. Not once. They haven't built one box, haven't packed one pen. Nothing. They're fired. I haven't even hired them, but they're fired. Man, I pay well. I pay them ten bucks an hour for a a seventh grader and ninth grader. Man, they could make some bank. Nope, lazy butts. Lazy butts. So is what it is. So it's good. 
on a completely unrelated note, have we discussed the Braves game yesterday? We have not. Let's do that. The Braves, y'all, scored scored the most runs or tied for the most runs or the most runs in about what is it, about 80 years, 90 years in the National League. They scored 29 runs. <laughs> and af- I tweeted after the second inning, they had an 11 run second inning. I just tweeted out hashtag Braves. It was like, oh my gosh, like what is happening? And then they went on to score 18 more runs after that. Like that just doesn't happen. It was, and the Marlins scored nine. It was a, it was a football score. It was a 29 to nine. So there's this, um, there's this thing I follow on uh, Twitter or this baseball, um, this baseball kind of stat that I follow and I'll have to go look and find the name. I won't be able to find it offhand. But it's basically, you think of it like a bingo when you get a score total between two teams that has never existed before in the history of the, of the sport. So this was 29 to 9. It's the first time. Yeah, Scorigami. Thank y'all. Scorigami. So they hit 29 to 9, which is a number that had never been landed on in however many hundreds of thousands, millions of games that have been played. So yes, they hit a scorigami last night. Thank y'all. I, I was on the tip of my tongue, but I, I was thinking John Shambi, so I, I was close. <laughs> yeah, in football, it's called a scorigami. Gotcha. Yeah, so it was cool to see that it was a... Uh, that they transfer that over to baseball, and that was one of the numbers that had never been hit because no one scores 29 runs. I mean, <sighs> that's right, Evan. So, yeah, that makes more sense that it was initiated in football. No, I know the toot blinds. I can't tell you the whole the whole uh, meaning of toot blind. It's thrown out on the bases. I can't, I can't do the whole thing, but I, I know it, toot, blonde, toot Blonde is basically a running error, a running mistake. Thrown out on the bases like a nincompoop. Yep, there you get it. Yeah, so Toot Blondes are for running mistakes, and uh, they're pretty glorious. You get, you know, you get one good Toot Blonde every week or two, and you see... Uh, you see it happen. So yeah, this was this is great. I like. Chip said nineteen of the RBIs were five through five by nine on the lineup. Yeah, uh, Adam Duvall did he have nine or eleven RBIs on his own? He hit three homers, nine RBIs. It's just unheard of. So yeah, <laughs> and I didn't watch the whole game. Like I was out by like ten. So it was a historic night for your Atlanta Braves last night. So it was uh it was pretty joyous. Grand slam three run, two run. That's crazy. Just needed a solo shot. Yeah, that was the big story, Sarah Beth, that this morning was uh Duval not having Duval barely making the team last year. And he's like sixth in the league um uh, in homers this year. The slugger cycle. That would be amazing. How long did the game go? Um, we'll have to look at the timing, but it was in the fifth inning after three hours, and that's when I went to bed. So it was already a full game time, only in the fifth inning, because they'd already scored 20 runs combined, over 20 runs through five. It's like 22 total runs. So it was over three hours at that point, and then they scored nine more runs or whatever it was. So it had to be a four, four plus hour game, four and a half. So you can look in the box score, they have game times. Yeah, benefit of the central time zone. Yeah, that's the other thing. It's like, I was only 414. I would have bet the over on 414. Because I like I put in three hours and I was done. <laughs> central time is the best time. I won't argue with that. I grew up in central time. I'm, I'm down with central time. So, yeah. I don't disagree with that. But anyway. All right, that's enough baseball talk. We've, we've probably lost half the chat. Because Brad, uh, Brad, oh well, we. I guess I wore Braves colors today. That was an accident. GMT or GT? Like no one, no one tells time by GMT. Where's Mike when we need him? 
Is Mike at the zero hour? Can't remember if Mike's at the zero hour or not. Started and finished dinner and the second inning was still going on. That was that was amazing. That inning was nuts. <laughs> Won't tell Tom and GMT. I could, I could, I could go just for standard military time. There's still time zone though. I was about to uh, change the topic into something. Oh no, I was just gonna complain about my schedule again. I was. Uh, only able to stay up to like 10 o'clock because I'm getting up at six o'clock every day now to take the kids, which is fine. Like I get a crap ton of sleep. I have to have like my seven plus hours of sleep. I'm a sleeper, <sighs> but my alarm's set for six and I'm tired at night at 10 o'clock. I'm like done. Like I couldn't have watched the end of the game if I wanted to. How about that Poe retro re -rizzles? You're also and you're going to be putting time out because we discussed that and you were late this morning. Did you have to dig out of the snow? to get here but it was it's pretty spectacular and i completely missed it like i didn't even lay eyes on it until chat shared it with me this morning awesome just a really really killer job that they did with that one so let's let's throw it back to retro um do we think coco i'll get to that do we what is the consensus like i gave my thought that they've done their peak closeout stuff with 30th anniversary are they going to have a surprise at the end are they going to do the kitchen sink like here's everything we have left just go for it are they just gonna go out like slowly hey here's the last release it's the you know bob's your uncle edition like what do y'all think they're gonna do and while you're while you're thinking while you're pondering the meta question yeah, I thought the original blog post said September. I don't think anything's like uh, like fixed. Not that I've seen. You think they're going to drop 20? They might kitchen sink it at the end. You think they'll have a good buy pin? I don't think they'll have a good buy pin because that would just mean a fight. Unless they did like 10,000 of them. I would love for Retro to re-release their first ever release. It's 2020, anything can happen. They may still be in business in 2021. I th I mean, that's on the table too. COVID may have impacted, yeah. I mean, them continuing to exist is absolutely on the table. It just is because, like, have, they haven't made a peep for since the spring. My pen is the goodbye pen. <laughs> I'm very happy with that, y'all. Like, Especially with the poster and saying like this is kind of what we did like during our during our run, pretty good run. I, I'm pretty happy with it. <clears throat> A vaccine edition that would be kind of hilarious. Uh, but yeah, what was their first ever release? I think it was just the solid ones. Oh, Rewizzles! I just saw your message. You only got up at eight. I hear you. <laughs> Yeah, and it's getting darker earlier, too. I wonder if they changed their mind with all the outpouring of the community. Again, yeah, I think everything's still on the table, y'all, to be perfectly honest. Oh, let me read. Evan says, I thought about them closing down versus selling out. People predicted they are closing down to prevent the name being tarnished in the future, but if they just go away entirely, what is there to stop Robert Rosenberg from just stealing his trademark in 15, 20 years and making them as late as Zombie Pen Company? Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> safer to find a new owner no it would just be safer to stay in business and no longer produce anything right actively do the minimum so that no one could steal whatever trademarks any anything you know stay minimally active as opposed to selling that's kind of my life philosophy right patrick actively do the minimum I mean that's a good that's a good life philosophy I think. Yeah, so it's a question. It's like one of those really, 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 really weird things that we think about. Ink of the day: thirty inks, thirty days. Private reserve DC show green. Gumbo man Pat, do you do how many months of the year do you do thirty and thirty? 
will you just do once a year 30 and 30 will you do it like once a quarter 30 and 30 what are y'all's thoughts on 30 and 30 because i know even supposing i don't know if they're here today um does multiple 30 and 30s Bijou, unrelated, I somehow managed to get random droplets of dye mine oxblood everywhere. I keep stepping in them so it looks like the bottom of my feet look murderous. You're very um, sketchy with the ink <laughs> getting places. <laughs> you have inky challenges. <laughs> to be fair, Robert Rosenberg resulted in some good pen companies against him once he finally got out of them. Yeah. Mm. I don't want to give that guy any credit, even if it's backhanded. <laughs> Foolish Fox, the uh, technically exist um, trademarking. Yeah, that's what I think. If you would, you would do something like you would have, you know, a lease, a minimum payroll, uh, like a singular product, a website maintained, uh, some kind of news every, you know, couple times a year kind of thing. Seems like half the new releases have been scooped up by eBay sellers who marked them up three times. I yeah, I hate seeing that. Can't do 30 and 30? Yeah. I don't know if I could ever do 30. 30 inks in 30 days broke me two years ago. Too much pen cleaning? I would have a problem with that. I can do 30 inks in 30 days if I dip uh, did a, a dip pen, glass nib, brush, just like a sample. But... Okay, there you go, Gumbo Man Pat. I try to do all the months that only have 30 days in them. Now you're going to make me sing the song, aren't you, and count them? I'm not going to do that. No, you don't, Patrick. It's a lot of samples. You could have a lot of samples, and then maybe out of those 30 inks, you find one that you go and buy. It would, I mean, 30 samples, believe me, that costs a lot of money, too. Is that what you're, you, the knock newsletter is for to peruse, peruse you're still using copyright? Yeah, probably. There's a raven on eBay for $1,000. Yeah, the final countdown. Who did we dip? I final countdown someone a few years ago. I think it was just at the end of one of our campaigns. Did a little final countdown -y thing. All right, just a reminder, in about 22 minutes, we're going to throw it over to the Relay FM channel. You can watch Mike play with keyboards. <clears throat> oh, Patrick, yeah, I could send Patrick a bunch of samples. I got to see something here, Chad. I want to get into keyboards, but I don't want to do the work to get in keyboards. That's kind of where I'm at. That's kind of where I'm at. Like, I will eventually buy one tricked out keyboard for this desk, right? This computer has a, a nice uh, keyboard that came with it. And, like, it's super cool. Like, it's a really good keyboard. Um, I might just get one at some point. M205 purple for a thousand dollars. Wow. Oh, did you ever listen to CY talking about pilots QC or lack thereof? Yeah, not pilot, but I did remember platinum. I do remember a conversation about the Raka being an especially challenging manufacturing uh, issue. So the one before this one. What's this one? What's this one? What's this one called? It starts with an S. I want a pretty galaxy looking keyboard, but lazy. Yeah, I want like a rainbowy, pastel y looking one. All the ones I like, none of the keycaps have the letters on them, and I'm I'm a I'm a I'm a hunt and peck typer. Like I need to s I need visuals on my keyboards. <laughs> How loud are mechanical keyboards? Um there it depends. You can get them as loud or as quiet as you uh, as you want. I know, right, Kate? Mega shame. I'm fast I'm fast and I'm fast enough yeah i need like 
visible letters. <laughs> I don't have to look at them, but I need to know that they're there. So yeah, that's a whole thing. Yeah, but you can really you can get keys that are all kinds of different. You can get you can get keys that are quiet. So I'll probably I don't know what's in this keyboard, so I don't want to go banging it. It's probably not uh, probably not worth it. Let's get sparkly alphabet stickers on them. Yeah, that'll bug me though because I'll wear them out. Speaking of sparkly, my sparkly pinatic stickers are supposed to come today. And my uh, my fat head for the wall. Maybe maybe it'll probably go over here. Then maybe not this weekend, but maybe next weekend I'll finally get some uh, I'll finally get some stuff to put on the wall. That would be nice for a change. Get some lights. Get some cool stuff. So I think browns are what I chose for my keyboard, like a slightly clicky. Reweasels, now that you say stickers, like I've had another thought. Maybe I just get a white board for the other side over here and just any stickers someone send me just get thrown up on the sticker board. That'd be fun. I like stickers. Get Jonathan to cast you some custom swirly key caps. Aurelius, we've already had texts and messages. Uh, R-E that. <laughs> So yeah, um, I will eventually get a keyboard, like a fancy schmancy keyboard, and then we'll just kind of have to see what goes from there. Primary manipulation keycaps. Yeah, just get like the escape key or something. So I don't know, I got way more to learn before I, I really go down that rabbit hole. But we'll learn from Mike today too. different switches on the space bar to make it easier to actuate like how many switches are on there like or just saying different from your keys keys one type space bars a different type gotcha yep see i'm not that knowledgeable about it i had to think about it like does a space bar have three switches underneath we have had email and text sent <laughs> i'm way ahead of you way ahead of you <laughs> just like my custom uh, acrylic dice from Jonathan those aren't in here I need to bring those back in here it's like I'd like to make a dice bag one day hey Jonathan when you make me some acrylic dice sure But yeah, it's that's like an it, it's like an infinite rabbit hole right now, and I don't have uh, I don't have the bandwidth for an infinite rabbit hole, which is keyboards. So we'll just keep going down the infinite pin pin hole. That's an interesting term. If you get a chance, check out Tay Times. Okay, I'll look. Yeah, we had a keyboard uh, streamer in in chat last week, and I I followed them. Not code dice. Evan, don't give people ideas. You know I'm not going to do stretch goals, and now you're just giving people ideas to yell at me about. Oh, that's super smart, Patrick. I'd totally do that. If I was still at my old job, I would totally probably have a portable keyboard, uh, like for macros and, and all that stuff. Yeah, Mike is a. Um, it's interesting to watch Mike. He's probably not listening. He's probably getting ready to the stream. Um, let's ban Tony for a little bit. Can we ban him for a while? Time him out. I don't know. We might do that. Um, Mike is the split keyboard typist, um, but his new keyboards are all single. Whatever. I don't know the different term. What would you like to talk about, Tony? Would you like to talk about black ink for a while? Seems to be your specialty. What's your favorite black ink? And how many are you testing at one time? You have a chain mail dice bag. That's that's a different stream, Tony. That's a different stream. Not, a, not this channel. That's a different one. 
Sailor Nano Black, right? Sailor Nano Black wins. I, I don't know why I'm singing in my head. Oh, I've seen Evans. Uh, I've seen Evans dice bag. It's uh, sizable. It's like as big as my head, pretty much. I, I have a large head. That bag is not that far off. Nano cartridge, Diatrimenus document black. That's the one that's on my list to buy. What is the blast best black ink? We're gonna have a uh, we're gonna have a guest post soon from Tony. Like you know, I'm not crossing my fingers um, that it's gonna show up. But how many how many inks have you tested on this uh, this post, Tony? It's about 30, 20. It's over twenty for sure. Seventeen inks, six different papers. Cool. My favorite black is uh, Nurabiro, um, Kiyono Oto Nurabiro. That's my favorite black, but it's not waterproof, permanent, anything like that. Um, but that's what I wanted Tony to work on. These are all gonna be permanent, permanent blacks, which is a, an important thing for black inks. A lot of people like specifically want that feature. Wow, the light, the sun came out and the light really changed in this room. Yeah, I think Nurabiro is just my best, let's have a cool black ink and a pen and not think about, have to worry about the ink properties. Sir Dark Face, let's go. Woo. Um, and then in the past, if for some reason I've wanted uh, permanent, I've always used Sailor Nano Black. For some reason, I've never used, really used Platinum Carbon Black, and that's probably like the most popular. Um, but Tony's talked me into Deactra Menace Document Black um, for a permanent black, which I'm gonna try at some point. Done all the pre-water testing work for that post. Cool. Nurabaro, hands down favorite black. It's really neat. The lighting in here is very different than when I started. Lighting for camera is just not thrilling. It's not my favorite thing. Jeherbon Pearl Noir. That one's popular. I've never used it really. But I can't think of an ink, a black ink I've inked up other than Nurabiro in a long time. I, maybe I jumped into a um, black uh, pilot ink cartridge or something, but it's pretty much Nurabiro. Noodler's Bulletproof and Heart of Darkness. Yep, those are going to be in the test, in Tony's test. I've seen the sheet. Um,. I'm interested to see the the outcome. Graphon Faber-Castell Carbon Black is that any does that have any permanence or are they just call is it the, just the the color is referred to as carbon black because I can't get platinum carbon black out of my head when I hear carbon black and that's permanent. But I don't even think I've seen the GVFC. Okay, it's on the list. Cool. Yeah, that's the thing. I'll almost never use black like i'll never choose black on purpose unless i'm really feeling neuro like i have the perfect pen for neurobaro which i have a nakaya that i love neurobaro in and that's it black cartridge that came with my sd is nice i don't know what it is yeah someone's asked me that before it might have been you i have no idea it's i imagine it's just some generic that a lot of these you know manufacturers in china and asia use Probably a lot of the similar cartridges from a lot similar places. Similar places. So just in, in the generics, but so here's a here's a question I've thought about, and I haven't I haven't asked Kenro or Carrier this. Like Esterbrook's gotta come out with an ink, right? Like, do y'all feel an ink coming for Esterbrook? I feel an ink coming for Esterbrook. Um, I meant to say this last week when we were talking about the uh, the JR. I feel it, they they Ken Rowe and the people that run it seem like they would have an ink. They've made pen cases, they've made pens, they've made custom nibs. 
they haven't made a notebook yet and they haven't made an ink yet and honestly i think an ink is an easier choice to, than a notebook notebooks are so damn hard but yeah i put me on the list for an esterbrook ink next year and i have i have zero information i haven't even asked the question of them but i was just thinking about this the other day when i had the jr um I, they they gotta be making an ink zero signal thanks for the follow appreciate you they probably should but they'll just get it for someone else which means the colors that have already be, been done I, again a hundred percent agree like all i think about when i think about esther brooks inks is what aurora did with colors straight up aurora color inks esther brook did esther brook did esther brook style more custom nibs are in line with traditional esther brook yep So yes, yes to ink lineup, yes to they will be standard, right? Something that is explicitly vintage safe too, that's a challenge. That's something, if you're not the OEM on that, putting that, putting that label on there, that's a risk. That's a mega risk. If you're saying explicitly, if you're not the OEM, have to blame you for getting me into the colleagues, and I love them, especially the neon. I, I I'm surprised at how much I like them. Not I'm the regular ones, not the the neon ones are super cool. Love them. Um, basically repackaging water waterman ink and marking it up. I don't even think they'd mark it up egregiously. They've been decent at like pricing some of the some of the pricing is is pretty rough the um the sparkle pins was um whew. but um i mean they're not in the market they're not in the premium ink market for that for estabrook i don't see it as a premium ink more expensive than waterman yes but like we're talking i'd be talking like 18 to 20 dollar 50 milliliter inks right that's your that's your standard you know red blue black <clears throat> pearlescent pigment inks do any of them have do any of the pigmented inks for fountain pen use there's art inks that are not for fountain pen use like for dip nibs that have pearlescence but that's almost a different composition for a fountain pen that wouldn't work. It's so like all the pigmented inks for fountain pens are generally flat. Um, like they don't have shading, sheening properties. They're just permanent and kind of vibrant. Um, I can't think of one with any pearlescence that would that would work i think that's more in the in the dip nib side of things which you can definitely get um what's the what's the big what's the big cool uh dip nib ink maker that i can't think of the name of seems like it's a it seems like it's someone's name like dr brown soda it's something like that and they have some cool i think they're pearlescent no not higgins um it's something more uh sciencey chemically sounding <laughs> i'm terrible at this um ph martins see monkey bananas howdy ph martins yeah see i was close doc martins i think they have like pearlescent inks for dip nibs or they at least have some very like shiny like interesting properties but they would never work in a fountain pen but they have, I think, if I if, if I'm recalling this correctly, as not an artist and not into the paint scene, they have like hundreds of colors. Like they're really huge, huge variety and choices of colors. If I'm not mistaken, so Diatra Menace Pearlescent inks. Let's see what we got here. Okay, I have not tried these. What's okay? It's called pearlescent, but is it just shimmer? Is it, I mean, are we, or is this a different property? 
This pearlescent ink is infused with sparkling metallic particles, giving your writing a glittery sheen. It is safe to use in fountain pens, but we recommend cleaning regularly. So it's... So this is an effect descriptor of a shimmer ink. Is that fair? As opposed to something without particles, but more mixed, which is what I'm thinking like the, the Dr. P.H. Martins is. I don't know. I don't think sparkle is the same as pearly. I agree. Like I think this is a shimmer ink that gives off a pearlescent vibe and they can call it that, but the ink properties aren't pearlescent, right? Am I, am I saying what I'm trying to say? I think just because it's named pearlescent, I wouldn't call this a pearlescent ink. Maybe, <laughs> I don't know. It's a shimmer ink. This is a shimmer ink, despite the name. Right, pearlescents have a different uh, consistency in the base, is what I would think a pearlescent ink would have to be, which would have, which would be almost impossible for a fountain pen, right? Now there are glossy inks. That's different. Almost all the black pigmented inks are glossy. Sailor and Platinum. Pearlescent is somewhere between sheen and shimmer may work the same on quantum of, quantum effects as many sheening inks. Yeah. These ink, now that you show me these, these are pretty cool looking though. I like these colors. Like look at these colors. But yeah, that's a shimmer ink. Platinum is the most glossy. Oh, there you go, Zero Signal. Yeah, I just don't think we're going to get that in a fountain pen ink. Like, what a real pearlescent ink is. I don't think we're going to get that. I don't think we're just able to get that in a fountain pen because it wouldn't flow. See, the, the Sailor Story inks are, are, are bright. They're vibrant. And flat at the same time, a little bit. I don't know that they're glossy, but they're cool how they work. It's really neat. Pearlescent is apparently defined as having a luster resembling mother of pearl. Yeah, I guess that's why it's, it's fair to use it as the descriptor, right? It's like glitter in my ink. It's It looks pearly, shiny. But when I think of pearlescent ink, as a property, I think of it as more of a, a milky, shiny consistency throughout the ink, not an additive like a glitter. That's just me, I, and, I, and I'm not an artist, and I could be very wrong about that. Yeah, with depth, right? But that's the way I think that's my vision of give me a pearlescent ink is different than give me a pearlescent looking ink, right? Which obviously diatrominous things they have with shimmer and I, I can't disagree with that I don't disagree with that I just don't think um, that's the question all right we're getting up to about 11 o'clock here let's see when Mike goes live do we know yet wow that's audio where's the mute button on this thing all right where's the relay feed All right, this thing's on. All right, let's go. Uh, let's go talk to Mike. He has good lighting. I have terrible lighting compared to what Mike's got. So uh, now we get to watch me fumble through the raid. Do we remember how to do the raid? <laughs> Raid, raid channel, relay, FM, no channels found, 
Is it Raid Bang? This is the worst. Twitch is the worst. All right, thank you all for watching. We're gonna do this. I thought it was like slash raid. Yeah, it is slash raid. Relay FM. All right, we're gonna raid him. He's got the fancy overhead cam. We're about ready to raid. Y'all are awesome. I'll be back Tuesday. Um. We'll do all kinds of things. All right. Bye.